We're going five for Friday, five ways to kick bad habits to the curve. Jed Blackwell, you got any bad habits over there? Plenty. Plenty? Lots. Man, you know, you always want your good habit bucket to outweigh your bad habit yeah. bucket. Yeah, it gets close sometimes, but it, it, man. It, it does. It, I think we all struggle with this, and some of the feedback we get with some of our groups and emails and things is, man, I just struggle. I can't kick these bad habits. I got these one or two things that just always keep holding me down. Here's here's what I want you to think about bad habits and good habits. Bad habits equal immediate pleasure and long-term pain. Good habits equal immediate pain but long-term pleasure. What, what do you think about that definition there? Well, I, I think that boils it down to exactly what it is. <laughs> That's the truth anyway. I was reading a book, and, and it was talking about smoking, which – Smoking isn't as prevalent, but, you know, in our, we're 51, 50 and 51. Yeah. We grew up, man, everybody, everybody smoked. Yeah, 13, 14. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I was reading a book, and it said if, if, if the second you took a drag off a cigarette, you immediately were stricken with lung cancer, nobody would ever smoke. True. But the fact that when, for those people that smoked, that it gave it it gave them it immediately gave them the pleasure of that craving being gone but the long term pain was coming no different than drinking a big 48 ounce big gulp <laughs> true of coke or mountain dew true if you immediately went into a diabetic coma yeah you nobody would ever drink one. probably be a little bit different yeah, yeah. but Tastes really good at the time. That's yeah, true. And then it that long, but the long term pain. So, so what we're what we're trying to do today is just give you give you just like we do on Five for Fridays, five things to help you kick these bad habits to the curve. And I believe that to kick one habit to the curve, you've got to bring another good one on. So, number one, we're going to say, let's clear out the op- obstacles. Take for instance, working out. So you're going to start a new workout regimen and you're going to get up in the morning and you're going to go walk 30 minutes in your neighborhood. All right. What are some of the obstacles to that happening? Getting up in the morning, getting up in the morning. Okay. (laughs) One. Yeah. That's number one. Not, not hitting snooze. Well, what are some of the other things? Walking out the door, putting your shoes on, getting out the door, finding too many other things that you should be doing with that 30 minutes or you think you should be doing with that 30 minutes. So you immediately wake up. And what what do you what are some of the things you have? Sometimes have you ever gone over? I'm going to go do something. I'm going to go to work out. Go over to my drawer. Open the drawer. Man, I can't find those shorts that I like to wear to work out. And man, what do I do with my running shoes? Right. And now you're 15 minutes later than you intended to be. And boy, that's awful close to the time you got to start getting ready to go to work. Yep. So let's just lay back down for a few minutes. Yep. So an example would be if you're going to work out the next in the morning, would be to Get your clothes out, have your shoes ready, have a big bottle of water right there beside you, and the second you wake up, the only thing you've got to do is literally you've just got to put your shoes on. you got to get those shorts. Because once you get your shoes on, once you get your shorts on, once you drink a little water, get yourself a little hydrated, chances are at that point you're all in. Yeah, you're probably going to go. You're yeah. probably going to go. Yeah. And so with any kind of any kind of bad habits you've got, get get rid of those obstacles and then that will allow you to to really do that 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 good habit and put that in. And that's a bad habit. A lot of, one of the worst habits that, that a lot of us have well, I would say probably everybody has struggled with at one point or, or another is hitting snooze. Oh yeah. Hit that snooze button. You can look at some people's phones. They got nine alarms set. Yep. <laughs> and I mean, the thing is, your iPhone. I think every nine minutes you hit snooze, it'll come back up. But you got somebody; they'll have an alarm set every three minutes. Right. And and I, I, I know someone very close to me. I actually, I actually live with this woman. I asked her, I said, why, "Why? Why do you have all those alarms set?" It's like, well, I like to. I know I set the first one, then I can. I've still right. got some time. I can sleep. Right. That, if you if you don't intend. And and the person that I live with, if you don't intend to get up at six thirty, if you, if you're not getting up seven thirty, fine. 
why do we set the alarm for 6 30 <laughs> yeah yeah why we got to listen to it for an hour makes no sense makes no <sighs> sense number two identify keystone habits charles duhigg he, he that that's his word uh, the keystone habits and what what these are these are habits that cause other good habits to follow the biggest keystone habit there is it's been studied over and over is working out so if you're going to work out in the morning other good stuff happens i.e if you if you go for that 30 minute walk we just talked about or if you go to the gym how likely are you to get a big donut or pastry right after that normal people or me <laughs> <laughs> let's pretend like you're okay. normal Jed. all right then not very not very yeah. not, it, it's harder to it's yeah. harder because you're thinking i've already done one good thing so i want to continue right. doing hey now let's take it the opposite direction so you get up can't find your shoes i'm gonna lay back down i've already lost this morning because i hit snooze i broke my promise to myself of working out now you get in the car and you stop by the gas station and there's a big pastry there. Yep. You know what you're going to do? Debbie cake. You're going to get it, right? <laughs> Every because time. You're already making bad decisions. <laughs> yeah. And and it's the same thing. So this is why you want to be positive of get something positive done quickly. Get something positive done early. And then the, whatever those keystone habits, remember, those are habits that if you will do these, other good habits will follow along with them. Number three, make those bad habits hurt. Make them hurt. You know, if you do something, have a punishment for it. Right. Whatever whatever that may be. It could be social media. Some some of us at times fall into traps where we're spending way too much time on social media. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so make your you know what, if I if I just automatically and, and this this will be a way you can test if you've got a social media problem. See how many times a day you, without even thinking, pull up social media on your right. phone. You you come to a stoplight. That's a problem. If you're doing it at a red light, yeah, <laughs> that's a problem. You, you pick up your phone, or you just wake up first thing in the morning, you pick up your phone, and and it's just this natural thing that that happens. Figure out a way to make these bad habits hurt. You know, hitting snooze. Maybe if you 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 put something in place, so hey, if I hit snooze in the morning, then I've got to do. 20 burpees you know yeah then i'm never hitting the snooze you're never gonna hit snooze uh-huh. you know now you got to make yourself do it but but make make bad habits hurt so these bad habits you've got in your life give and what will happen is your your when you do that it your 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 mind will naturally start associating those bad habits with pain and so instead of i'm going to hit snooze every time i hit snooze i get to sleep five more minutes well, guess what? Well, then your mind starts equating, well, hit snooze, and that's a good thing. Right. Whereas if, man, I hit snooze, well, shoot, I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to do 20 burpees. And you're doing those 20 burpees, and as you're doing it, you're like, I'm an idiot. Every time you're going out, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Shouldn't hit snooze. I knew I, knew I, knew I didn't have to do that. Make those bad habits hurt. Your, your mind will start equating it, and it will start preventing you from those bad, bad habits. Number four, we, we talk about goals a lot on this podcast. You know, you know, I believe in goals, but I think they're overrated. I think setting goals can can be overrated. Where we just spend our whole time, whole life, just making a bunch of goals, and we never do put the systems in place to meet those goals. And that's where developing habits. That's where the magic happens. Develop these habits that will take you. I mean, set goals. We want goals. We we those are good. But goals in themselves do nothing. It's the habits that you have to do. So develop habits that take you to your goals. And if you will develop good habits and figure out a way to to get rid of your bad habits, I think you'll be shocked at what you can do. I, I think we grossly underestimate how much progress we can make in a one-year period. And that's an interesting way of looking at it, uh, of replacing of making it a habit instead of just saying, I'm going to get to X. Well, how are you going to get there? And mm-hmm. and how are you going to do it every day? How are you going to structure your life every day so that getting there is just kind of an afterthought? Well, you start thinking you, you start thinking in terms of what kind of person am I? Right. You know, I mean you're you're okay, if you you know, if you if you want to if one of your goals is to lose thirty pounds, 
Well, what what habits do you need to have in your life daily right. that are going to make you the kind of person that's going to lose thirty pounds? And the first thing you got to do is lose one. You got to lose one. So, that's that's it. Yeah. That's it. I mean, really, that's the only. Thing. Yeah. There's no way to lose thirty pounds without losing no. one. Right. Im- impossible to can't, do. You can't lose two without losing one. That's right. That's right. And you lose one, then you can lose two. Right. Then you can lose three and and move on. Number five, as we're wrapping this up, identify one bad habit to kill today and one good habit to implement immediately. We all know we're thinking right now in your mind. Listeners are are thinking about, they know that one thing. Man, I I need to get this out of my life. Whatever it could, whatever it may be, it's crystal clear in your mind what that bad habit is. And it's probably also crystal crystal clear of that one good habit, that one thing you need to start doing today. Just do that. What you need, what a lot of you need is you need, you need, you just need a small win to get this momentum rolling for you. You've been, you've been letting yourself down. You've been caught up in this cycle of just bad habits and making the same mistake over and over. And you may have been doing this for a lifetime. You may have been doing it for the last couple of years. You may be in a funk and if you would just get yourself a win right now, identify one bad habit and kill it today. Just stop doing it. You know, I'm not I'm not asking you for monumental change where you're changing 15. Ha- pick one bad habit a day, kill it, and replace it with one good habit and just see what happens. See what happens for a week. And then you will see that that it will it will make a difference in your life. And then what you'll do is you'll change another one and another one. And the next thing you know, like you said, you look up. We grossly underestimate the amount of change that can happen in a person's life in one year. Correct. Just yeah. by making good decisions every single day. And with that, do hard things today, and tomorrow will take care of itself. <laughs>